I'd just like to thank everybody for their patience in waiting for the next part of this tutorial series. The next few parts are going to go over basic dungeon generation replicated from Binding of Isaac. Now this is not the easiest topic for beginners, but hopefully I can give you some tips on how to wrap your head around procedural generation. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new folder inside of my scripts folder and this is just going to store all of my dungeon generation code, okay? And we want to create quite a few scripts and I'll go through them all at a later stage but for now I'm just going to create them. So. We're going to need a room controller to control our rooms, so we're also going to need a room, okay, um, this is going to be the individual room. Um, we also need a door for every door that is connected to the rooms, so we can get to our next room. We also need our dungeon generator okay as well as a dungeon generation data and this is going to be a scriptable object which is pretty cool uh, we'll go through that later so hopefully you understand it we're also going to have a oops a dungeon crawler controller okay and finally a dungeon crawler okay so let me explain a bit of what we're going to go through so in this part we're only going to look at our room controller um, and maybe the start of our room in a binding of isaac style dungeon there are going to be rooms. So this is a room, okay? Might have a room over here, might have a room over here, might have one up here, okay? Now, these are all going to be connected via doors, okay? So, if there is a door, we wanna be able to go through it, okay? I'm going to go back and forth just like that and we also want to be able to generate the rooms themselves in a random sort of pattern so it looks uh, pretty cool but not completely random we want to put some rules on it like for instance we want to have a like a start room okay um, and eventually, if we keep going on, we might get to our, like, boop. We might get to our boss room, right? It's a very bad skull. <laughs> okay. So, I guess to implement this, we're firstly going to um, define each individual type of room, okay? So we're going to have a start type of room, we're going to have an empty room, and we're going to have a boss room. Now, we're going to put these in separate scenes, so we can load them additively. And this will allow us to not like completely freeze the game until all everything's loaded. It's going to load them all sort of one by one, and it sort of looks nice when you're loading them up. Okay, alrighty, so I've just opened up the room controller script. The first thing we're going to want to do is we want to be using our unity engine dot scene management because we want to make use of all of the cool scene loading features that comes within unity now um, before we start within our class i'm going to create another class okay and this is going to be our room uh info okay so this is going to have a public string, and that's going to be the name, okay? We're going to have a public integer, and it's going to be our x value, and another public integer, and it's going to be our y value. 
So these are going to be within relation to our um, scene. So if we have a start, this is going to preferably be at zero and zero. But if we go to the right, we're going to want to have one and zero, negative one and zero, zero, one and zero, negative one. Okay. So we sort of want to keep track of everything um, within these sort of uh, parameters. So it's like our own coordinate system, you could say. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of this. So um, this is going to be a singleton, as we've talked about before. And whoop, keep that on. I'm going to call it instance. OK. Now, we also want a string. And this is going to be our current world name. OK. So for instance, um, in Binding of Isaac, we have your first set of rooms. Um, and then once you've defeated the boss, you go to the next floor down, you could say. So we can basically, we can call this basement. Okay. And I'm also going to have a room info. And this is going to be our current load room data. Okay. And the next two things I'm going to make use of is a queue and a list. I'm going to call it load room queue. Um, and we're going to be able to make use of that. So when we're loading up our scenes, we want to make sure that we're loading up the, the first one that's been put in first. Okay. All right, cool. And also just need a public list of our room. Okay. Now it's going to be whoop, loaded rooms. Okay. It's going to equal to a new list of room. Cool. Uh, I also want a, a bool going to be is loading room going to equal to false. We'll make use of that later on too. Now, um, in our awake method, as we've done before, we're going to set instance to this. Okay. And yeah. So I think the first thing we want to do is we want to check if a room exists, okay? So to do that, we can just use a ball variable, okay? And I'm going to call it does room, oops, does room exist? And it's going to take in an X and a Y value, okay? Now, we're going to return loaded rooms dot find and we're going to make use of what's called a lambda expression in here. So we're going to grab the item and the item dot x value is going to be equal to x and the item dot y value is going to be equal to the y and check whether that is not equal to null, okay? And then it'll return true or false appropriately. Okay, so we don't have a definition for our X and our Y in our room. So we're gonna wanna go in and open up our room, okay? So the first thing that we wanna do in here is we wanna public int width and a public int height as well as a public int x and a public int y okay so that'll make our room controller happy for now now 
I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our room is that we're starting within the right scene okay so if our room controller dot instance is equal to null then we've obviously pressed play in the wrong scene so we just want to return and maybe you could give like a debug dot log as well so this could be like I don't know you pressed play in the wrong scene all right cool so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a public vector 3 okay and this is gonna be called get room center okay now we're going to return a new vector 3 and this is gonna be our X multiplied by our width and our Y multiplied by our height okay now as well as this I'm gonna make use of the editor gizmos so we can just have a look at and um, I guess we're gonna make use of the gizmos so we can have a look in the editor and line up our rooms pretty much perfectly um, just so it's a bit nice okay so we're gonna set our color of our gizmo to red and gizmos dot we're gonna draw a wire cube so this is a rectangle <laughs> transform dot position and a new uh, vector 3 with our width and our height at 0 cool now this should automatically draw a gizmo for our room so if we go back in here now and we go to our scenes I'm gonna create a folder and this will be I guess dungeon rooms okay okay so I want to duplicate it and then I just want to call it basement main okay yep. perfect so we've got this in nicely and I guess now I want to um, I want to create a, a starting room so basement start and within here don't want the enemies um, don't want this enemy don't want the items group or potion keep the player um, the health text don't need that don't need that cool so I guess now we want to create our room so I'm just gonna create a game object set it to zero and I'm gonna call this room now within this um, I'm going to create I guess some walls so I'll call this left wall or maybe we'll just call it side wall okay and I'm gonna need to import some new sprites so alright so I've just imported a couple of sprites texture type sprite 2d okay now I can assign the side wall in here cool so I can just drag it over it's a bit small so we can actually extend it out just a bit just like that and okay so um yep I'm actually gonna duplicate that and I guess I'll rotate it uh, 180 degrees so it's a bit 
Oh, the opposite way. I'm just gonna place it here. And... Rotate it 90. Down the bottom. Cool. And finally... Negative 90. And just drag it up here. Sweet. So I guess this is like a, a basic room. Um, we can change the, I guess, give it a nicer feel. Cool. Nice. So we have our basic room, I guess. So I can drag it in here. And I'm going to add our room onto it, okay? And I think the other thing we want is the doors. So, again, I'm just going to create an empty game object and I'm going to call it door. And drag a, drag a wall onto it, okay? So, um, we can just change the... Make it a lot smaller and I can drag it over here. Probably wanna maybe we could just like that. Cool. And make sure it's over a bit, because we want to add a collider to it at a later date. Alright, so we'll duplicate that. Okay, so we've got our basic room set up now. Just like this. Okay. Now, in our basement start, we don't actually want to keep our canvas and everything. So, this is all going to be within our uh, main dungeon scene. Okay. So, we can delete this, delete the player. Uh, don't need the event system, don't need the game controller, don't need the light. And we don't even need the camera. <laughs> okay, so we've got our start room. Um, and I'll just duplicate this and I'll, I will rename it to basement end. Okay. And I guess the difference with this one, um, for now is I can just add in a sprite. Okay. Okay. So we've got our little start and I'll just go over to our start. And I will add our sprite into our room. Okay. Cool. So I think I'm just going to end this one off here. And we'll continue off in the next video. And get into some hard coding. <laughs> so I guess this was just a general setup. And we'll go through and set up colliders next. And we'll also go and start working on implementing our uh, scenes into our main scene so we can spawn our rooms so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did leave a thumbs up and leave a comment for any feedback that you may have or some features maybe that you'd like to add into or you'd like to see put into this game thanks i'll see you guys next time